we're still here at Spring Mega Fest. We have to tone it down a notch because I'm a little bit shaking. He's bombastic because we're with our childhood. Lee Merriweather herself, royalty in my mind because oh, you, <laughs> the Catwoman. Oh my God. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. We're <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy is very docile right now. I'm being good. You, you know, well, it's royalty. That's why yes. we have to be good. Hence to myself and everything. Um, <laughs> what's it like meeting people like us? <laughs> no, it's wonderful. I, you know, you don't. When you do a performance of, of <laughs> the scope of Catwoman, you don't know what happens to people who see it. I have found out what happens to people who see it. They turn into me, yo. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's such a treat. That's why I love to come to conventions like this, because I meet people who honestly sat home and watched and have watched the movie over and over and over again since they were little. I have it on, I have the movie on VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray. I, I remember, um, I grew up in Norwalk, Connecticut, so I was at a lot of television stations out of uh, New York, and the movie was on ABC television at like seven o'clock at night for the ABC Family Night movie, and I cried. I must have been about five years old because my parents would not let me stay up to watch the movie. Oh. You're, my childhood consists of <laughs> Superman, Lone Ranger and Tonto, the Green Hornet, only for a short time, they kept switching back and forth, Batman, then Star Trek. And I want you to know, you are a very big part of my childhood, and I want to thank you. Oh, well, I'm so glad. You may talk now. <laughs> I, I, I just, like, you've worked with so many names, like, y y Look at the pictures we've. Star all right, we got Adam West. Okay, of course, you know Batman, fantastic. Lily Munster, Leonard Nimoy. I mean, what was it like? Every part like, of our time. In that time, like, was the respect there for women? Like, it was. Did, like, I mean, to me, you're you're a superstar. Like, did everybody else. Think about it. I mean, uh, Star Trek. The monsters. You were like you were our child. Every channel we turned on, you were there. And I gotta thank you. I mean, I can't thank you enough. Like <laughs> but thank you. No, I I I was very fortunate uh, to get the jobs that I did, to work with the people that I did. I was extremely lucky. You were an amazing talent. I don't think it's fortunate. I think it was skill. Like. Thank you. Thank you. That's very very nice. Well, the role of of Catwoman. You know, I had Julie not been given the, a role in a movie, and they had to scurry around and send out things to the agents. My agent called, they said, they're looking, you know, you've got to read for Catwoman. And I said, what, why, why? They got Julie Newman. And they said, no, no, no she can't do the movie. And I said, it's a movie? And I thought it was for the show. And that's, and I, the, they sent me the script, and I read it, and I said, oh my gosh, it's a, two parts. I mean, two different roles in one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was I just going to ask you about the accent. The How long accent. did you have to prepare for that? I was doing a play at that time, at night, and before we went on, well, before I went on stage, and then afterwards, I worked on it for uh, a couple of couple of weeks and uh, it uh, it paid off yes it did working it, on it plus which I had grown up with cats always yeah, in my house I would never have told by your shirt yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes well no, that's no but uh, when I auditioned I walked into a room of a hundred at least a hundred girls and they were all beautiful and voluptuous and I thought oh my gosh how am I going to what can I do and I I literally I started right away I, I have they gave me the script and I sat in the, ch in the chair and luckily it was a chair that I could kind of curl up in and then I started this <laughs> doing that you know preening as all my cats did and Needing my legs and everything. And, I can see and you in talking. costume, right? Yeah, for real. Yeah, <laughs> talking. Okay. You know, I'm very lowly. And 
and I, I had started off with a rather high voice. I thought that might help because when I wanted to be the cat, then I could do away my voice and be me, you know. And so so it, 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 it obviously it worked because I got the part. <laughs> Thank God you did. Oh, yes. I mean, oh, I, I was definitely. I, growing up, I always wanted to be a henchman. Because <laughs> it was what Catwoman, and the, the the only thing that upset me was you didn't get to drive the car. And uh, I accidentally, uh, Frank Gorshin was at the wheel. We were, Blame the other guy. We were we were doing a film festival up and we were up in um, oh, outside of Toronto, and <laughs> no, no, it wasn't Toronto. It was uh, Upper New York, and he said, you know, the, the, the Batmobile's outside. I said, oh yeah, I, I saw it before, and he said, you want to, come on, let's go. And I said, no, no, come on, you can't. He said, and he showed me the keys, and I said, Frank, you can't. No, what happens? I mean, what, what if it, you know, what if something happens? And he said, Come on, it's a chance of a lifetime. Got into the car, and I'm, I'm praying the whole time. Please, dear Lord, don't let anything happen to us. Don't let anything happen to the car. It's like it's just see Chuck Barris, you know, killing us. I mean, literally killing us. And I was so scared. And nothing happened. Oh, was so, so close. I mean, really close, because he backed up first and almost hit a railing behind us. And I said, oh, Frank, let you just stop. Let me, let me get out. He said, no, 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 this is too good. This is too good. It was out and onto the street. And then he came back, he parked it. It was, everything was fine. And I said, thank you, dear. That's very nice of you. And I do appreciate this wonderful experience. And I'll never forgive you. <laughs> he said, oh, come on, Lee. And then, Years later, we, uh, I did a play with him, and I played six different women in a play. It was played against Sam. And do you believe me? I, I, I couldn't understand it. He was supposed to imitate Humphrey Bogart in it, in the play. And, they, and he didn't do it. We said, but it's in the script. Frank, it's in the script. You're supposed to do it. It's a Woody Allen play. Come on, you got it. He said, no, no, that's, a, that's, that's kind of a cheap laugh. I said, no, people will love it. He said, oh, we said, please, just one night, one night, tonight, tonight, do it. Just do it, please, for us, for us, for us. And then I got Bridget Hanley, who was in the play, playing the lead. And, so, and he, she begged him, and he said, oh, all right. So that night, he did, brought down the house. We couldn't get the line away from him. After that, every night he did it for the rest of it. You're an amazing person. Thank you. Thank you for being on the Angry Geek Show on behalf of Jeremy and myself. And thank, th thank you. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lee Merriweather. We're going to let Jeremy do the, the SIDS thing and we're taking off. Thank you. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? Come on.